You know, sometimes you get asked when you do this sort of content that I do, which is quite sort of dark, depressive, you know, like, oh, how come you're so cynical? How come you're not hopeful? Have you got no hope for the future of British politics, eh? Where's your hope? Where's your optimism? Don't you think things could be better? And I'm always like, oh, yeah, oh, I think things could be amazing, couldn't they? Some of the uplands we could have, maybe. Rainbows, teddy bears and unicorns all round. Like, isn't that sort of vapid positivity precisely what got us into this mess? But no, if you want an example, if you want a reason why I feel so devoid of hope, why there is no real optimism, this is the standard of politics in the UK, of debate, of the discourse, right? This, this is how it works. You pick any social issue you like, any policy, whatever it is, this is how it works, right? So a new, a new announcement, a press release will go out. What should we do this about? Should we do like racism? Should we do like the police? Crumbling energy. We did a uh, housing crisis, right? Okay, that's something that we all know about. Something that affects all of us. So, a new study will come out from the British Association of Landlords or something. And it'll go out to a load of different news outlets. LBC, The Sun, The Telegraph, The Times. And one of them will pick it up. A study commissioned by the British Association of Landlords has found there are as many as 500 applicants for any one available property in London now. And you hear that and you think, oh my God, well, yes, yeah, the housing crisis. You know, I guess they better build some more houses or they've got to revolutionise the mortgage market, bring back 100% mortgages, make it easier for people to be able to buy stuff, but also increase the stock. There's got to be solutions there. Then LBC or Talk Radio will have a representative from the government who will come on and you think, oh, cool. Cool. OK, right. So it'd be like the housing minister or something. They'll, t they'll talk about how they're going to build more houses. Good morning, Dick. Yes, uh, it's, it's nice to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, now, a as I was saying, uh, housing is not really my brief, so I, I, I can't really go into that. Oh, that's that's frustrating. But what I can tell you is that since 2010, over a million affordable homes have been built. Uh, o over a million? Yes. Yeah, yeah that, that's right. O over a million have been built. Um in Britain. Why, why is he talking about like in Britain? Like this, this story is just in London. Well, with all due respect, Minister, uh, this story is about London. We're talking about affordable homes in London. Yeah, that's right. You tell it, Nick. Right. But I, I'm just saying that if there are criticisms of the way that the Conservative Party have run the country, I'm just saying we have actually built a million affordable homes since 2010. Right. Right, OK, but uh, I mean, you're supposed to build about 400,000 across the country every single year. Yeah, 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 I, I know. But you say that you built a million over 13 years. Yeah, yeah, but, but I, I like to say it like a million. So it's, it's more, more impressive. Right, but Minister, isn't it a point of fact to say if you have built a million over 13 years, but there are still 500 applicants for any one vacant property? Yes. Well, isn't it true then to say that it's it's insufficient? You need to build more houses. Well, absolutely, Nick. And and can I just say to, to any young people now looking to get onto the ladder, to buy their first home, to, to make that move. Can I just say we support you? We're looking out for you. Just yeah, yeah, uh, hold your nerve. Nerve. And we will be right there clapping for you when when things get tough. Then maybe the story develops and a bit later on, 11 a.m., 12 o'clock, somebody from the opposition will come in. Well, thanks very much. Yeah, it's, it's nice to be here. Yeah, I, well, I think this is evidence that the Tories have manifestly failed the younger generations. They are no longer the party of self-responsibility or home ownership or aspiration. And this is just the latest sad example of that. Yeah, yeah, I like this guy. This guy makes sense. Right, I mean, we can all look at the Tories' abysmal record in power. It, it's laughable. It's absolute dog eggs. But what would you do if you won the next general election? What would a Labour government do to fix the housing crisis? Well, you know, I don't deal in uh, in hypotheticals. It's, it's very difficult to answer that question now, not knowing what the set of conditions are likely to be later. Oh, come on, give us something. But what I can tell you is that the state of the national debt, the fact we can't really borrow any more money, we can't jump back into QE and magic it out of thin air, we can't get growth to pay for it. What I can tell you is that we will do almost precisely nothing. Oh, good. What happens next? Because this is a stick to beat the Tories with, this will come up in Prime Minister's questions. Now, this is traditionally, or supposed to be, our opportunity, or at least our elected representatives, their opportunity to hold the government to account. Keir Starmer, as leader of the opposition, is supposed to fire his questions at the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister is supposed to respond 
with answers to those questions. I know, mind blowing. But how would it actually work in practice? It'd be like, well, first up, you're gonna get a few time wasters. People who literally stand up there in the House of Commons and exhaust useful parliamentary time and resources by saying things like, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I, I, I wanna start by saying, uh, would the Prime Minister please share in my best wishes for the people of North Bordwich who have just opened their fourth austerity-driven food bank off-license? And then everyone will be like, hey, 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 hey. The PM will stand up and be like, absolutely, yes, no, the people of North B Brom Bromwich or something like, oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's a place very close to my heart and I, I wish them the best. Meanwhile, all the journalists and politics nerds are like, oh my God. No, nobody cares. Then after a few of those, then Keir Starmer steps up and he asks his questions. And it's like, I would like to ask the Prime Minister to share his thoughts on the British Association of Landlords study that this week revealed there are now 500 applicants to any one vacant property in London. Does he accept these findings? And what does he plan to do about it? And it's more, <laughs> and this is where the hope dies. This is where the optimism just stops circling the drain, goes down the U-bend, gets flushed out to Portsmouth Harbour. Because focus on the question, right? What is the actual question? He's saying, look, there's a study that's been released. It says that under the topic of housing, there are now 500 applicants for any one vacant property. Ergo, you need to build more houses. Do you accept the findings of that study? And so if you do, are you going to build more houses? But this is how he would respond. Can I just say, I will take no lectures from the Labour Party on house building. When they left government, there was no money for house building. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're all watching like, oh, God. Mr. Speaker, he sort of points the finger of blame at, at, at the Conservative Party for not building enough houses in our in our nation's wonderful capital city. But, but Mr. Speaker, when we try to pass our bill, to allow us to build luxury flats on a children's playground, Labour refused to support it. <laughs> and again, we're like, oh my God. I'm confident, Mr. Speaker, that if you ask any of our nation's great homeowners, the majority of which are above the age of 55, if you ask any of them, who is the party that allowed them to get on the ladder? I'm confident, Mr. Speaker. They will say the Conservative Party. Oh my God. Can, can somebody gouge my eyeballs out and stuff them in my ears? I, I can't take this. Then Rishi Sunak goes home. Maybe the Minister for Housing goes home. Maybe the two of them text each other that evening. And it's probably something along the lines of what, what are we actually doing about house building? Oh, um, absolutely nothing, really. Right. OK, I mean, we should we should probably have a look into that at some point. Yeah. Yeah, OK, well, I I'll put it on the list right after I've fixed all the cladding and rack and whether we're going to do anything about the help to buy mortgages time bomb. And yeah, I'll get to it. Don't worry. All right. All right. Yeah, no rush. I mean, Labour will be in soon, so it'll be their problem, won't it? And then the news cycle moves on and the whole thing disappears again. Nothing ever gets done because things just keep ticking over. Nothing ever gets funded because there's no money for the funding. So when people go, God, don't you have any hope? or optimism about anything. Like, could, could things seriously not get better? I'm like, no. <laughs> this is, this is it now. Drink? <laughs>